welcome back. Got a short little mystery for you today. Looking here at the bench, this is a Pico half height, five and a quarter inch Apple II floppy drive. One of those generic aftermarket o, uh, OEM type of, of floppy drives uh, that came with my original Apple II, uh, Apple IIe's back from 1994. Now this uh, came to me described as uh, being able to read but not write. Um, and I can confirm that back in the 90s I, when I tried to use it, that's exactly what it did. It could read, not write. Um, but because, you know, it wasn't terribly functional, it got relegated off to the, uh, off to the drawer somewhere. It didn't get used very much. Now, around, uh, I don't know, the 2000s or so, I pulled this drive back out and to play with it to see if it really was bad. Make sure I wasn't doing something right, uh, wrong or something like that. And uh, I found at that point, not only could it not uh, write, but it couldn't read either. So it had gotten worse, weird. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, and I lost interest, I threw it to the side. Flash forward to yesterday. I decide, you know, I have a lot more electronics experience now. I have an insane wealth of information at in my fingertips called the internet. I figured I should take a crack at this and see if I can get it working again. So I plugged it into the Apple II, turned the Apple II on, and bad things happened. I would love to show you exactly what happened, but uh, I have a feeling if I do that, um, I'm going to damage the Apple II. So I'd describe what happened. I turned the Apple II on, and the Apple II did not beep. But it also did not go into uh, power supply reset, where it goes tick, 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 because of a, uh, a dead short. Um, and uh, the power LD on the uh, inside of the board wasn't, it didn't look right. It wasn't as bright as it should be. So I turned it off pretty quickly. Um, and I'm like, okay, something is really toast with this drive. So I took it apart. And uh, just to take a look at the insides uh, to start the process, see what's eh, what's going on with this thing. And I immediately noticed two things. Uh, and uh, one was the uh, smell of, hi, I'm electronics and I have decided to die today. And the other one was something I'm about to show you. So let's take a look at the drive here. This is, uh, it says it's a five and a quarter inch floppy direct drive LDD 103 SSA made in Taiwan. Uh, flip side, and you can see this is the label that was made by the guy who originally owned these Apple IIs, um, you know, writing that it reads only. So let's just go ahead and crack it open, and I'll show you what I found on the inside here. Got one screw. Come on, come all the way out. You can do it. There we go. Two screws. Three. And four. This back panel comes off and you can see the underside here. This drive's pretty typical um, drive, uh, generic drive unit. Um, has the uh, the uh, synchronization pattern on there, so if you have your strobe, you can make sure it's at the right speed and all that. Slides out, top piece comes off. Now let's flip this over, and I want you to look at that for a couple seconds, and you tell me if you can see what is wrong with that. I'll let you. I'll let you stew on that. Do you see it? Well. If you can't, I will point it out to you. This chip right here does not look right. There is some dark discoloration right around the center of the chip. And we will zoom in up on that so you can see that a little bit better. Yeah, you can kind of see it right in there. It's a little bit darker there in the center. So that chip is it has uh, seen better days. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take that chip out, put a new chip in, and see, see if the drive works, you know? Um, this chip is a 74 LS125. Uh, uh, that is a, a quad three-state um, uh, latch. Uh, basically, it's, it's used as a bus driver. Uh, and uh, bus drivers, basically what they are is 
they allow you to drive more TTL loads uh, from a single chip than what that single chip might be. For example, um, you know, the 6502 can usually only uh, drive X number of loads, and if you need to push more loads on that, you have put buffers in between it so that the buffer is driving the load and the 6502 is driving the buffer, and it, it helps with the loading. So uh, let's get this out of here. Actually, before I do that, I want to show you uh, I may have shown this before. I like to use this knife for pulling chips from boards um, because it's got the pointy edge and it's a knife, so it's 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 tapered. You know, it's got this uh, got the sharp edge here. It works really well for getting underneath chips. Works better usually than the black stick here. The black stick sometimes you can't get underneath there uh, very well, whereas this can just see it slides right underneath there and you pop chips out. So let's go ahead and pop this out here. And, wow. Yeah, I'd say that gr chip got grumpy. Yeah, that socket is all melty. Now we know where the smell came from. And if you look, you can see like it, these two diametrically opposed pins here are where all that heat and meltiness was. I'll bet you this chip, I haven't looked at the data sheet for the chip really, but I would say that the, your 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 uh, ground and uh, ground and voltage are directly across that. I bet that chip shorted straight across the substrate, and that's probably what smoked it. So let's go ahead and put this chip back in, and put a new chip in. And the notches are on this side; they point in this direction. So we want to make sure our notch for this is in that same direction. Uh, chip isn't going in very well. Here's a little trick um, if you're going to put chips in boards is to roll the pins on the chip so these will come out with the chip slightly splayed out or the pin slightly splayed out from the chip. So if you take the chip and uh, just roll it slightly kind of like that it'll usually pull those pins back inward so that it will go in better. like a champ. So, let's take this thingy and plug it in and see what happened. So, uh, get that aligned properly. Drive is in. And let me get, ooh, I forgot a floppy disk. Let me go get one. I'll be right back. And we're back with the floppy, so we're going to put that floppy in there, into this uh, into this drive. We're going to turn the Apple II on and see what happens. So if we're lucky, it'll work. If we're not lucky, I'll catch my house on fire, and you guys will get to see explosions. It'll be fun. So let's uh, go ahead and turn this on and see what happens. <laughs> Look at that! It works. At the very least, it's reading from there, and it didn't catch my uh, Apple II on fire, much to your chagrin, I'm sure. That wouldn't have been as fun for you to watch, but whatever. So let's go ahead and see if we can format this floppy, uh, reformat it completely, and reread it to see if we can read and write data to this disk. So in here, I have a compact flash for Apple II that uh, has uh, some tools on it that we can use to do this. So let's change to that. Let's go to copy two plus. We don't need the date. I want to go ahead and format this disk. Let's format this disk as a ProDOS. And we're slot six drive one. Ready to format. Will it work? Destroy per, yeah. Volume name. Let's call it ProDOS again, sure. Look at that. It works. One chip. Replace one chip and the machine works. That is phenomenal. So let's uh, let this format through and see if it go. Yeah, it says formatting complete. Great. So let's do a verify of the disk. Do you verify properly? 
halfway done. Wow, zero errors. We fixed it. So we're going to go and do a uh, some files copy here to this drive and see if we can make it boot. So I want uh, the that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yep. And we want two uh, G for go. Copying the files over. That's two done. That's three. And four. So let's catalog that disk. Yeah, normal's fine. Six one. There's the files on the disk. Sweet. And let's go ahead and boot from it. Ha! Look at that. It works perfectly. One single chip. And it's fixed. Well, <laughs> I'm amazed. All this time, 20 years that this has been sitting around and all it had was one bad, bad little chip in it that was uh, ruining the whole day. Well, that's all for today's episode, but I'm back. I thought I was done, and so did you, but after I put this drive back together and uh, hooked it back up to the Apple II to test it again, it stopped reading discs again. Wacky. So I played around with it, and unfortunately I didn't catch this on video because eyes a doof, I didn't think to turn the camera on, uh, but I'll show you. Uh, this little connector had a problem. If I pulled up on it like this, when I was trying to read and write to it, you know what? It would work. And then if I pushed it down, it didn't work. So I took it apart. Um, or actually, really, before I took it apart, what I did is I took a pair of tweezers, and while trying to read and write from the drive, I individually jiggled every single one of these wires till I found one that was causing a problem. And it was this white wire right here. Took it apart. Pop the little DuPont or uh, was it JMX, whatever little DuPont style connector out of here. It looked, and this white wire wasn't even stripped. It was basically just the sheathing of the wire had been somehow crimp pierced by the crimper when this was put together originally in the 80s and was making connection, but just barely. And that explains why it just didn't work for the longest time. So I took that wire out, and because I didn't really have a, a way to replace this piece, the, the, metal, um, the metal pin here, um, I just soldered in place. I took the wire out, stripped a little bit of uh, the, the sheath on, soldered it, and stuck it in place, and it works a dream. Just goes to show, you know, sometimes uh, you think you have something diagnosed and it's not finished, you know, but these things happen. Well, I really hope you enjoyed my episode today. Um, I'm really enjoying taking these electronic things apart and learning how to actually fix them. You know, that's kind of the point here um, when you're, uh, you know, when you're trying to build a museum like this. Uh, you don't want to just, oh, that's broken. Let's buy a new one. It isn't about collecting toys for myself necessarily. It's about preserving these devices, getting these old original things working again that, so that we can continue to enjoy those. I'm learning a lot while I'm doing this, and I hope by watching my videos, you guys are learning a lot too. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or thoughts, leave them in the comment section to uh, comment section below. Um, you know, I have a Patreon now. Drop a dollar in the cup if you think you've learned something or you think my videos have value. And remember, 8 bits are all you need.